Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting reaction in the MCU verse. Which one, Dan? We're watching Captain America Civil War. Yes, we are. I can't imagine what's gone wrong with this film, kind of like the others. <laughs> but let's go find out. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So you have that new Captain America script for me? Yes, sir, I do. Now, I should inform you there's a rumor going around Hollywood right now. Oh, what's that? Apparently this year, everybody's gonna be making movies about heroes fighting heroes. There's gonna be Batman versus Superman. Uh -huh. In Transformers, they're gonna fight Optimus. In the new Fast and Furious, they're gonna fight Dom. Wow, it sounds like everybody's gonna be doing the same kind of crap this year. Oh, yeah, great. sounds that way. So I figured we would too. <laughs> it's gonna be called Captain America Civil War. What's that gonna be like? It's gonna be like if a kid took out all his superhero toys and just started smashing them together. Oh God. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna have the government be mad at the Avengers about all the damage caused in Sokovia and Washington DC and New York City. Wait, didn't the government try to nuke New York City? They did. And nobody's gonna bring that up? Bastards. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, they want the Avengers to sign the Sokovia Accords. That would give them all government oversight and kind of keep them in check. So Tony and some others are like, yeah. But Captain America and some others are like, no. Mm. Oh, the conflict is brewing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty serious. It's like the Avengers are being torn up from the inside. Wow, so there's no need for a villain. Well, no, there is a villain. What does he want? For the Avengers to be torn up from the inside. <laughs> oh, good. Huh. His name is Zemo, and his family was killed in Sokovia. So he's gonna do, like, all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, he's gonna bomb the United Nations and frame Bucky for it. Wow. Yeah, and that's gonna kill the King of Wakanda, so Black Panther's gonna want to kill Bucky, too. Oh, Black Panther is in this? Yeah. Wow, there is a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the movie's gonna be super stuffed. So, like, half the movie is gonna be setting up future movies. At least. I love it. And we're also gonna have this huge fight I'm at sure an airport do. that's gonna involve... <laughs> Sorry, just a second. Hello? Really? We did? Well, that's great news. Yeah, no, we'll put him in there for sure. Thank you. What's up? Okay, so I just got word that we can now use Spider-Man in the MCU. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Right? So let's shove him in there somehow in <laughs> wow, Civil War. Of yeah, we could have Tony recruit him onto his team for that airport fight. Do you think people are going to mind that... That doesn't make much sense. What do you mean? Well, Tony's whole thing in this movie is about superheroes being more responsible, right? So we probably shouldn't have him recruit an untrained child and throw him into a <laughs> fight with the world's most powerful heroes and put him in mortal danger. Okay, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. It doesn't make too much sense, but also look at it this way. It's Spider-Man. No, yeah, that's a good point. It's super People cool. love Spider-Man. They Period. do. Oh, and I'm gonna get somebody really hot to play Aunt May. Really? To play <laughs> Aunt May? Yeah, well, I mean, what two words come to mind when you think of the character Aunt May? I don't know, old lady? Sex symbol, exactly. No. <laughs> that's... Okay. Hey, while we're at it, let's throw Ant-Man in here. How would we do that? Just toss him onto Captain America's team. Wasn't his whole movie about not wanting to go to jail and jeopardize things with his daughter? Yeah, pretty much. But we're gonna have him jump onto the side of international fugitives, no questions <laughs> asked. That's exactly right. Okay. Hey, toss Hawkeye in there too. But he retired to be with his family. Yeah, but here's the thing about that though. I don't care. Gotcha. I mean, if we're gonna I believe stuff that. this movie, let's go all out. Yeah, no, fair enough. So what happens at this airport fight? Well, I figure we just give every character a couple of one-liner jokes, maybe one or two fight scenes each, and call it a day. Sounds like a classic Marvel fight. But I was thinking because, you know, somebody should get hurt during a fight with the world's most powerful heroes that maybe we kill War Machine at the end. No. No, 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 none of that things having consequences business. Okay, can he be injured, maybe? It just feels like something should happen. Be some Fine. He can get hurt, but he has to be in recovery at the end of the movie. Thank you. But that's it, though. No more consequences. I promise nothing wow. else will have much impact on anything at all. Good. So how does it end? Well, you know that bad guy I mentioned earlier? Yeah. Well, he's going to have this thing where other than a minor hiccup at the beginning, everything's just going to kind of go his way. What do you mean? Okay, so because Natasha released some Hydra files, he knows that something happened in 1991 involving the Winter Soldier. So he tries to find out what it is by interrogating this Hydra dude, but it doesn't work. The hiccup? Right, but from that point on, everything's gonna be super easy, barely, barely an inconvenience. I'm listening. So he decides he needs to interrogate Bucky himself, but Bucky is in hiding. So he bombs the United Nations and frames Bucky to kind of flush him out. Wouldn't being framed just send him deeper into hiding? You'd think so, but it yes. works almost immediately. 
immediately. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so then Zemo kills a psychiatrist that's supposed to interview Bucky and takes his place. Isn't anyone familiar with the psychiatrist they hired, or at the very least, know what he looks like? You'd think so, but luckily yeah. for Zemo, apparently nobody does. Wow. Okay, <laughs> then he finds out what the 1991 thing was, and luckily for him, it involves the Winter Soldier and Tony's parents. That's convenient. Very. And then luckily for him, Captain America decides to go against everybody, and somehow he and Bucky manage to escape together. Hmm. Then luckily for Zemo, everybody follows him to Siberia. And there's an actual videotape of Bucky killing Tony's parents in 1991 because luckily for him, there was a security camera in that exact spot in the middle of a forest road and for some reason, <laughs> Hydra decided to it. keep it in the records. And then Tony sees it and luckily for him, even though Tony now knows that the Winter Soldier was brainwashed and framed and not actually responsible, he immediately loses his mind and tries to kill both Bucky and Cap. Wow, that's all super lucky. So then there's a fight, but at the last minute, Cap doesn't kill Tony. You're damn right he doesn't. So then they're like, well, we're not friends anymore, but also we're still friends and call me anytime. I love it. Do you think it's going to do well? So much for that. I'm looking at this as kind of a test. What do you mean? I have this theory that stuffing more and more characters into our movies translates to more money at the box office. Interesting. Yeah, and so if this movie does well, we can just go crazy with it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 76. Good wow. lord. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot of celebrities cram in there. That is a lot of marketing opportunities. Mm. See what you did. So is this like the first movie where they started cramming all these guys in there? Just because? Well, I mean, technically the Avengers was a big team up too. But you're right, they definitely added a lot more here with Spider-Man and Black Panther. And then of course you've got Bucky there who was only in uh, a Captain America film up to this point. Right, but it seemed like they put him in there for the sake of having this fight. So that they could have sides drawn. Right. And it wasn't really story driven. It's just like, here we go, we need to we need to recruit members to our team. It's really a whole personal struggle that probably didn't need its own movie. Because again, like we talk about some of the other films, you know, what what does it what does the events matter in the grand scheme of things? Because Black Panther was always out there regardless of what happened with his father getting killed. Bucky was always out there regardless of you know, him being framed. So theoretically you could have got two of the Avengers films coming up without having to go through all this nonsense. You probably could have. In in reality it felt like this was less about that and more about just like putting some convenient bridges in place. Mm -hmm for future films, for future phases of films. Because it, 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 it bridged the way for a Black Panther movie. So I'm kind of curious, where do you sit on the debate about government oversight of the Avengers? I was not a fan of these guys in the movie, for instance, uh, Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a fan of them having their big fight with uh, between between uh, Iron Man and uh, Hulk out there mm -hmm. because they were destroying a lot of a lot of the city to do it, and I know that wasn't intentional, but it's like these are things that happen anyway. At the same time, the government did launch a nuke <laughs> at New York City. Right, there's a lot of hypocrisy there. <laughs> At the same time. Very true. I mean, is this the same government that launched a nuke? That's what I want to know before I answer that question. Presumably, yes. Well, um, we do know that Hydra was involved at one point. Supposedly, they're out of the government, as far as we know. Been a few years have passed since then also. So you could have a new administration. We don't know. They don't really keep track of who's in charge of America when all this is going on. And you I know, for me, it's like government oversight, probably not. If anything, there does need to be some kind of organizational body there, and I guess that's kind of where S.H.I.E.L.D. came into play, mm -hmm. but they were kind of government, too. Uh, there was the, the Avengers ended up having their own complex, but that was after they got government oversight, I think. Right. So, I don't know I don't know what the answer is in this case, but, I mean, what, what's the difference if the Avengers are out there d destroying everything to fight off bad guys versus mm -hmm. the government? Things are still going to get destroyed, innocent people are still going to die. So. Yeah, I mean, I agree there has to be some kind of accountability here because you can't just go around destroying destroying buildings, no potentially killing civilians, whether accident or intentional. At the same time, how do you actually do oversight for that? Because, you know, these guys, these guys don't just act in America. You know, they act internationally. You're going to have other governments involved in this with their own policies and agendas going on. You're going to have to figure out a way to actually stop the Avengers, too. I mean, these guys are superheroes. You know, you can't just fire a gun and take them out. At least not most of them. At the same time, I think there has to be a line drawn as to when you're actually using the aid of, of the of the Avengers here. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you don't need them for every stinking thing that's going on in the world. 
They don't need to be there solving conflicts between countries. Right. They don't need to be there solving, you know, to to deal with like a hostage negotiation thing. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be there for every everything because yeah. it's like your presence isn't always going to help. Yeah, you also have to draw a line there. I think. Yeah, because I, I kind of think about that scene at the beginning of Age of Ultron where they're storming that terrorist base, and I'm thinking, do you really need the Avengers for that? Because I'm pretty sure special forces can handle that job too. Right. And there are some capacities that you don't need to be Avengers. Sometimes what they need is your oversight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, we're doing a government operation. You guys have technologies we don't because you're a private thing or whatever. We need your eyes and ears right now. And that's really the limit of this. We can handle it from there. Yeah. So that would that would work too because Tony Stark has his private entity is you know stark stark enterprises there whatever it's called his technology alone could probably aid big time his, oh yeah his ai so that would be all you need a, a really a lot of it's those moments where a force from another part of the galaxy or another world mm -hmm. is coming to take over your planet that's when you need avengers help so i say humans can deal with humans just fine it's the aliens you got to worry about Correct. The ones that have technologies or government is is like way overpowered against. Right. So, yeah. That's where I stand. Uh, I think that's probably about right. I'd agree with you. Okay. Let us know, fam, where you stand on this too, guys. Be interesting to find out what you think there. Uh, some people agree. Some people just want to watch the world burn. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I think that's going to do it for us on this one, fam. By the way, we wanted, we wanted to let you guys know we now have activated a members-only portion of our channel there. By all means, get over there, take a look at what's being offered, and sign up to be a member yourselves, guys. Help support this channel so we can continue to make better quality content for you guys. So guys, if you sign up to be a member right now, we're only offering one level. For the one level, you are getting access to a monthly poll to pick what movie we watch for the for each month. Or we'll pick one of the movies that we watch for each month, I should say. And then you're also getting access to our custom emojis and our loyalty badges. But as always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again, <coughs> and become a member. <laughs> but until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.